Hey, what's the crack and welcome to or back to the channel. Today's episode is part one of a three part series where I will introduce you into a good starting workflow for working with multicam footage and multicam clips in DaVinci Resolve. In today's episode, I'll show you how to create a multicam clip as well as go over some quality control tips that I recommend that everyone does before you actually start editing that generated multicam clip. So with that all out of the way, let's jump into the software and start learning. The first thing you're going to want to do is to gather all the media that you need to be synced and put into the multicam clip into one place, one folder or bin. In this scenario, the audio feed went directly into the A camera. If you used an external recorder and therefore have relevant audio files as well, you want to make sure you, that you select those relevant audio files as well as the video files. Once you have gathered all the relevant media, you will select it all. You can click and drag or hit control A and you will right click any of them and come to create new multicam clip with selected clips. Now let's talk about all of these options, starting from the top, working towards the bottom. Start timecode. For the most part, you don't really have to worry about this. And the only outstanding information I would say is in relation to in angle sync. If you choose timecode, then the start timecode will be the start timecode of that metadata. If you choose sound, then the start timecode will be the timecode of the earliest clips embedded metadata. Multicam clip name is very self-explanatory. I will typically do the name of the subject, whether it's an interview or a performance, followed by multicam. The frame rate will automatically detect the frame rate of your source clips and set the multicam clip frame rate to that. In general, that's what you'll want and you'll want those two figures to match your project settings frame rate. For angle sync, this is arguably the most important setting of this process. The in option, out option, and marker option, I'm gonna basically cover as one. What these rely on is that you have gone through the footage by yourself in a source preview window and either set an in point for in, an out point for out, or an, a marker for the marker method at a point in these clips that you know is unified. So for example, if there is a slate in shot, as that slate closes and clicks, you set an in point or an out point or a marker and then select the relevant one in angle sync. And it is that that Resolve will look to to sync the clips. The next option is time code and time code arguably the best method for handling multi-camera syncing. If your cameras were jammed and synced to a time code generator, they'll be embedded with the relevant metadata to utilize this technique. So you will select that. And lastly is the sound option, which I reckon is what most of us will be using and it's what I use the most. When your footage is being recorded, you will want to make sure that the cameras, if they don't have sound being fed directly into them, that you still try to get some sort of microphone on board or maybe it's an inbuilt microphone and you will still want to set a decent gain level and record as good a copy of scratch audio as you can because the sound method Resolve will look at the shape of the audio waveform of those video clips and try to align those waveforms as a method of syncing. So in my case, I'm relying on sound, so I will select sound. Angle name is simply how will Resolve go about naming the tracks of the multicam clip, which will determine the angle name. So this can be done with sequential numbering or using the angle or cameras metadata embedded to the files, or it can use the clip or the file name, depending on what you choose. Don't overthink this if it's not making sense to you because these can be updated and altered later on, which I will show you. Next up is split multicam clip at gaps. This is a new feature and I don't know what it does. At the time of recording this, the latest documentation for DaVinci Resolve completely mitigates this Next is detect clips from the same camera. What this is meant to do is detect clips that were shot on the same camera and put them on the same track, which will make them the same camera angle. So you don't end up with extra camera angles by accident. 
In my case, this doesn't work because my guess is my C camera that has a half an hour record limit that had to be rolled twice to cover this interview, giving me two clips for one camera, probably doesn't have the relevant metadata that Resolve is relying upon to fully utilize this feature. If that setting is relevant to you and you enable it and it doesn't work, don't worry because we'll be going over shortly how to compensate for that. Detect using has several methods in which it will go about analyzing those clips from the same camera to perform that function. If any of those options make sense to you and the footage you're working with, go ahead and select it and if it works great. And if it doesn't, like I said, don't worry, we will cover the workaround shortly. Lastly, we have move source clips to original clips bin. If you select this, it will generate a bin called original clips and move all of those clips used in the multicam clip to it for organizational purposes. For me personally, I'm very organized with my media and bins in Resolve, so I tend to leave this unchecked. If you think you can benefit from this option, go ahead and check it, and that's it. We can now hit create, and Resolve will start analyzing the clips based on the settings we've given it to create a synced multicam clip. Very briefly, I'd like to draw your attention back to your media pool really quickly. You will see that there is an extra piece of media there. On the bottom left corner, you will notice an icon and that is an icon to let you know that this is a multicam clip. You can now drag and drop this multicam clip into your timeline and start working with it. To wrap up part one, there are a few quality control style things that I recommend that you do before you move on to cutting up the multicam clip, which we'll cover in part two. So first, come to the multicam clip in the timeline and right click it and come up to open multicam clip in timeline. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to correct for Resolve failing to recognize that those two C camera clips were from the same camera and you can see it's accidentally put it onto an extra camera angle making it look like there's four camera angles when there's only three. So all you have to do is select the second clip and just in my case, I'm doing alt down arrow and that just pulls it down. And then I will right click over on the left of the timeline here where our channels are and I'll just hit delete unused angles. So we're back to just three camera angles. The next thing I recommend you always do is do a quick manual review of the audio and visual sync. To do this, I will alt and drag over the non-critical audio clips here, the ones that are just scratch audio, and I'll hit D on my keypad to disable them. That leaves only the correct main audio to be heard. Then what I will do is one clip and one angle at a time, just play through for a couple of seconds of footage. It'll become apparent very quickly if these are out of sync. If there is a frame rate discrepancy or a sample rate discrepancy in the audio file, there is a chance for drift as the clip goes on. So I'd also recommend that you review a few seconds at the start of a clip. And if they appear in sync, review a few seconds at the end of a clip as well. If there's any drift, this will make it apparent. Once you've manually confirmed that everything is synced correctly, you can move on to the last thing I recommend, which is if you need to, you can update the camera angle name. To do this, you will just click on the track name of the audio tracks here. Then you can just type in whatever suits you best. To get back to your main timeline, just come down here. And in my case, it's called sample timeline. And you'll just double click that and you'll come out of that multicam clip compound clip and back to your main timeline. We're now ready for part two, where we will cover how to cut up a multicam clip and how to change camera angles. We're gonna be covering several different methods, each with pros and cons, so that you can come away knowing what works best for you and your workflow. As always, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. And that way you will get notified of when part two and part three of the series get released. Have a good one and I hope to see you in the next video. We can